Hi, everyone. Come on in and welcome to Masterius. Grab a seat, make yourselves at home. I'm Julie DeBoer, your host. I'm an artist here in Western Canada and one of the founders of Masterius, the best community for artists all over the world. It's a pleasure to welcome you. If you're checking us out for the first time, we'll have a coupon code for you in a minute so you can redeem your ticket price for mentorship at Masterius if you're interested. As always, say hello in the chat, share your comments, stories, and questions. Throughout the panel, we'll try to get to them all and notice there's a little toggle. If you put it to everyone, then everyone will see your comment. And I'll stay on after the event to share more about how you can work with a master or professional artist to see real measurable progress in your work. And you can always find more info at masters.com. And I'm going to give away a one month events membership to a lucky artist who sticks around after the event for the chat. All right, today's event is really important and I've been looking forward to it all week. Uh, I'm glad we're going to tackle this topic together. At Masters, many of us are learning by copying our mentors work because it's a great way to learn. That's why it's done in our mentorship groups, at ateliers all around the world, and at workshops too. But what, we, what can we do with the artwork that is copied or heavily inspired by another artist's work, or even from their reference photo? Can we sell it? Can we share it on social media? Use it to make business cards? There are some hard and fast rules, but there's a lot of gray areas, and we're going to talk about those too. My hope is that together we can create a professional standard of practice for our very own community here at Masterius so that we don't run into issues around copying that can be really tricky to navigate. As one of the founders, I want to build Masterius to be a community where we hold ourselves to the highest standards of practice while having grace for each other as we're all learning. All of us are learning. So here to help us are our very own Masterius mentors, Gay Adams, Yvonne Reddick, and Stephen Pritrich. But I want to hear your voice too, so please share your thoughts in the chat as we go. All right, Gay Adams, I'm so pleased to introduce you to her. She's a master artist with over 30 years experience. Gay joins us from the west coast of British Columbia, Canada and creates incredible landscapes in oils and acrylics. She paints plein air for the thrill of the chase, for the surprise of the unexpected that often happens when painting outdoors, and for how it enables her to capture the illusion and effects of light. Gay is a trained life coach as well and uses that expertise to share her passion for plein air with the artists she mentors right here at Masterius. She leads plein air trips all over the world, including Italy and Mexico, and always manages to turn them into a grand adventure. And I'm getting excited because I get to paint with Gay this February as she's the workshop instructor for the Masterious Art Retreat in Mexico. So mark your calendars, folks, and sign up to join us February 8th to 15th. Registrations are open for Masters members only, but it will open up to the public. So get your spot. All the info is in Masters chat. And if you're not a member and you wanna come, we'd love to have you. Membership is as low as 19 bucks a month, super cheap. All right, next up is Yvonne Reddick. Yvonne is a professional painter from beautiful Kamloops, BC, also in Western Canada. She's known for her skillful use of layers of transparent and opaque pigments to achieve paintings that look like they're lit from within. She is deeply inspired by the beauty of Renaissance and Baroque paintings and spent years apprenticing under the renowned Canadian artist and Masterius Master, David Langevin, who also ha helped us launch Masterius two years ago. She continues to study and apply the techniques of the European old masters, such as Michelangelo, Caravaggio, Rembrandt, Vermeer. As a leading art educator in her area, Yvonne shares the old master technique behind her signature style with growing artists and now also at Masterius, as she's a new mentor with us as well. Welcome Yvonne, how are you? I'm great, excited to be here. Thanks, Julie. 
Awesome. And next up is Stephen Patrich. And I don't know if I'm saying your last name right, Stephen. Wow. Close enough? Yeah. <laughs> Stephen is an artist storyteller. He loves to inspire creativity and courage in others and tell stories through his brush. A plein air and studio painter for over 35 years, Stephen studied at the American Academy of Art and the Art Institute of Chicago, coming out with degrees in architectural illustration, graphic design, and fine art. He also studied watercolor painting under Irving Shapiro. He loves to get outside with his wife, Bobby, who is also a full-time artist and capture the stories of the land. If painting is his first love, okay, second, if you include Bobby, then teaching is a close runner up. Stephen loves to connect with his artist mentees, giving them a leg up in the skill and ability to market themselves in the world. Welcome, Stephen. Thanks, Julie. Good to have you. And I didn't really say hello to Gay. How are you, Gay? <laughs> I am just ducky, thanks. Good. And uh, I'm Julie DeBoer. Most of you know me. If you don't, uh, I am a Western Canadian artist as well in Alberta. And I do these large acrylic uh, flowing sweeping landscapes. I also learned from David Langevin, not to the degree that Yvonne did, but he was my first um, mentor and instructor for many years. So I'm a little bit more um, abstracted and graphic. I'm not sure what I am. Um, and people ask, but no, I'm not high when I paint. <laughs> Maybe I should try it and see what happens. No, that would be too risky. Anyways, just kidding. Um, so I'm one of the uh, founders of Masters as well. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna stay on the call afterwards to talk about Masters. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. And I'll give away a one month events membership as well. All right, enough of my babbling. I'm excited to dive into this topic. The way we thought we would start as always is to give our mentors a few minutes just to speak freely about the topic. And uh, Gay is gonna take the lead. Okay. <laughs> I can see more and more people uh, pi piling into the event, which is great. Yeah. Um, just briefly, um, my background in, in recent years was serving on the standards committee for the FCA and what the standards committee was responsible for was really educating the membership of the FCA which is 3,000 members strong as to um, practice with Canadian copyright laws you know what what is cool to do and what's unlawful to do and um, all this sort of thing and there while there are some gray areas there's a few things we can be sure of um, and we'll talk about those as we progress. Um, and really, uh, you're with Masters because you want to improve your game, you want to get better. And so many of you here are um, trying to, you know, you're, you're, you're inspired to develop a career. And this is important stuff for you to know. Mm -hmm. Different groups will have different rules about whether you can submit work that's been in a workshop, you know, rendered in a workshop or all the rest of it. Um, and Masters is developing that for themselves, but I'm hoping today we can just put in the broad strokes for you. And I'm sure lots of questions will rise out of that, so. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, thanks Gay. Yes, we have started doing art shows. And so this is some of the stuff we need to consider too. Uh, we'll be happy to learn together. All right, Yvonne, Stephen, who would like to go next? Yvonne, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Julie. Um, yeah, it's such a big topic. And as Julia had mentioned earlier, copying is, is one of the fabulous techniques for learning. It's tried and true um, down over the ages. Um, and, and copying from, I, I encourage all of my students to copy from your favorite artists. And as many people have said before us, it's kind of like a mechanic taking apart an engine and learning how that engine exactly was built. So that whole reverse engineering idea and, um, and to learn to see the way that an artist sees. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, many of my students often mention that I teach them how to see. And my response is drawing and painting is what teaches you how to see. And it's so exciting to see that happen. And, um, 
And there's uh, Austin Cleon who wrote the book, Stealing From, or Steal Like an Artist. And he said, you want to learn to see like your heroes, not look like your heroes. Mm. So that, I thought that's a great quote. Yeah, I love that. That's, that's perfect. Thank you, Yvonne. All right, Stephen, you're up. All right, yeah, uh, welcome everybody. Um, I'm Steve Puttrick, uh, residing in, in the Chicago land area. And I've been uh, teaching for quite a bit. I've been in the uh, professional art field for about a little over 40 years. And um, my students and I um, often paint from photographs. We, um, especially in the winter time where you can't go out side and, and paint plain air efficiently. Uh, photographs are, are a really good source tool for learning how to paint. And I've collected over the years hundreds of hundreds of photos that we often use in our in our class. And most of those photos I I've taken. So they're free to use and I give permission to my students uh, to use those photographs um, freely. The, um, the ones I haven't taken, uh, I will either get permission from the photographer or uh, get them from a royalty-free site. Um, I know Facebook has groups where there's photo references for, for uh, artists that uh, I get some of these from and within the rules of that site they say you know these can be used for paintings mm -hmm. but like Gay said there's a number of rules from um, uh, various institutions organizations that uh, want artists to follow those rules for submitting their art and it's important for artists to uh, gain a more professional uh, experience by following those rules um, accordingly. And uh, we'll cover some of those. But um, yeah, that's, that's about all I want to say. Um, Perfect. Thanks, Stephen. Okay. All right. So uh, there's a lot to dive into, and I want to definitely get to reference photos. But before we do, um, can we talk about kind of the broad rule when we actually copy uh, our mentor's painting? What can we do with that painting and what can we not do? Who wants to tackle that? Probably we should all take a turn at that one. <laughs> okay. That's a biggie. And different artists have a little bit different gray areas around that and different parameters. And um, I'm just going to say, I'm so excited to see how many people are joining. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. That's so fun. Um, yeah, so the learning along with, you know, the paint along workshops and all of that, those, uh, for me, I feel that those paintings are learning opportunities and not the work, paint along workshops and clinics and tutorials aren't necessarily to provide students with a piece of work to sell. It's a learning opportunity. And I encourage, I would encourage people to learn from uh, several different masters, several different favorite artists and put all of those together into their own signature style, mm. developing that. And which is super exciting to see. It's such a rewarding process to see. Um, and um, yeah, so the, those pieces are learning to, and it's better for the artist to not start selling pieces that they've painted along from from their in my opinion it's better for the artist to come up with their own original ones when they're ready to sell and it's better for their career and um they'll go they'll really go places mm -hmm. yeah good point good for career and reputation does anyone want to add to that well just just that there's an absolute hard stop on you may not sell those pieces. Those are their practice pieces. You know, mm -hmm. just like when you're learning the piano, you do scales and arpeggios, they're practice pieces and you learn from them. So what can you do with them? 
Maybe you turn out a paint along that you really like. Well, you know, gift it to a friend. Um, you might want to sign it um, your name after so and so. You can do that. Um, you can decorate your home with them, decorate your kids' homes with them, and and they can still bring joy and a sense of satisfaction. Um, but you should not offer them to galleries. You should not enter them into juried shows. Um, and you should not put them on your business cards or on your website. Uh, if you put them on Instagram or Facebook, you need to give full credit. Say, here's a paint along I did in a workshop with mm -hmm. Yvonne, you know, and, and do it that way. So that's cool. So that's what you can do with them. And the big thing, like Yvonne said, the biggest thing you can do with them is learn, you know, so these are scales and arpeggios. It's practice mm -hmm. and nothing will get you there faster than practicing. And I agree with Yvonne, it's such, it's such a great tool, but, you know, put those parameters on yourself. And also when using a photo reference, I see all these questions coming up in the chat. I'm hoping we're going to answer some of them. <laughs> yeah, before. we will, we will. <laughs> um, when you're in a workshop and the instructor uh, is letting you use a, a photo reference of theirs, um, either for paint along or for just painting on your own in the workshop, before you go into the studio and do a big reproduction of that piece, ask permission from the artist who provided the photograph. Because I will do the same thing as Stephen, bring photos into my workshop. And generally, I just don't, I generally don't offer photos that I'm planning to do a big gallery piece, but I've had it happen where someone has copied uh, from one of my photo references that I have previously done a studio piece from, and then they end up posting it online. And then someone's wondering if I've copied someone. Right. You know? mm -hmm. so, it, so you need to get really clear on the photos that are not your own, that you were using them with permission. Okay. Because those of us that are, are making a living at it, we don't want to see something show up in a jury competition. There's the same reference we used and somebody's wondering, oh, well, did they both get a stock photo off a site because if you're with the Federation of Canadian Artists or the Oil Painters of America, if you used a stock photo, then you're not allowed to enter that into a jury competition. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are these things to consider. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just hit this uh, question right up front. Um, if I paint from a photo by someone else, is it illegal to paint from it? My painting will never be photographic it will look different than the photo. So is it illegal? Like, is it an actual, are we breaking a law? Not, not to say that we shouldn't, that we shouldn't do it. Um, but yeah, is there, do you know if there's a legal re repercussion? Yeah, absolutely. There is depend, depending on the photo, hmm. depending on the photo. If, if you take a photo that's not, that you don't have permission to use, it's like, you know, um, there are sites that you can pay a monthly fee and you can mm -hmm. use those photos or, you know, and Stephen is a photographer. So maybe I should ship this over to you, Stephen, as no. a photographer, you know, people can't just find one of your photos and use it without permission. Do you want to speak to that? Yeah, I, I've, uh, I enjoy photography. I, I, and I use photography uh, for my creating references for my art. So uh, quite often artists, will ask me for permission to use a photograph that, that I've taken. And I, all, you know, I, I, I've never said no. So um, I've also asked photographers um, on, believe it or not, on Twitter, where I found amazing photographs on Twitter. I contacted the, the photographer, I had said, Hey, Mike, His, my name was Mike. Um, I'm an artist. I'd love your photography. Can I, you know, use some of these to create art um, and paintings with? And he was an artist as well. And he, he said, yeah, you have full rights to use these paintings and oh. uh, to, to use these photo, photographs to create art from. And one of the paintings, one of the paintings on my display as uh, Julie was introducing me, was one of those photographs that mm -hmm. I knew from, from Mike. And um, 
Can I ask, did you sign a contract with Mike or just a no, verbal? It was just, just a, a direct message in Twitter. Uh, was I, I reached out to him and we have kept, you know, friends since then. But um, mm. it was, uh, it was, so I got permission from him. Um, I didn't feel like I was breaking any rules by painting that photograph. Uh, if you compare the photograph with the painting, it does look completely different. So I'm not a copyist so much as I'm using the, the photograph to uh, be inspired to paint that painting. And it does look different. You know, I improved the painting. I, I improved the photograph within the painting and, you know, simplified and, and you know, used my design skills to improve it. But I think and the, the key, Steve, Stephen, when you say the key is that you had permission. So even yeah. if someone is only inspired by the photograph and they feel they've changed it, the yes. key is you need permission from the photographer. But I know I can't enter that into, you know, um, into competition, into uh, organizations that don't allow the artist to use photo references that they have not taken themselves so mm -hmm. you know i was able to sell that painting uh, but um yeah it was um so yeah you got to be careful you got to be you know i think it it really comes down to is this paint painting set up for commercial use or non-profit non-profit is typically a learning experience. I am not profiting from this individual piece of art. Uh, it's it's set alongside, and um, and versus the commercial art, I can sell, I can market, and and so forth. So, so if I'm a, an artist starting out and I loved your work and took one of your paintings and and copied it myself. I wouldn't actually need to ask you if I can do that as long as I'm not doing anything with that artwork. I'm not putting it on social media without crediting you or selling it, that sort of thing. I would, I would, yeah. I would err on reaching out and, and asking permission. Mm -hmm. uh, people get asked all the time and it, then it comes back as um, a compliment. Mm -hmm. You are, you are, uh, seeing this as an, as an important connection. Um, I've, I've maintained a connection with the photographers um, over the years. And um, so make those connections, um, err on the side of, of caution. And you'll be, um, you'll be amazed that at the response you get, uh, the positive response you will get from from photographers and other artists. There are some questions coming in specifically about the photography piece. Um, would the photographer get just attribution or a small cut of the profits based on the photograph? Uh, but I'm guessing not unless you actually set up a contract where, yeah. yeah. So, so just to bring up another point about that, um, there are sites where you can find these images and you can pay a monthly fee or you can pay per download. Um, and, you know, the licensing is in place for different uses and you have to check them out, like Shutterstock or uh, dreamstime.com um, are two of the ones that I sometimes use when I need a reference for something that I, I don't have. And um, so, you know, you've already got the permissions by paying the monthly whatever. And as for uh, just going back to the previous point, Julie, that you asked, if you see a painter, a painter do a painting and you want to paint it, you, you know, you actually don't have to ask permission to paint it, but you can't display that social media, enter it into a competition. You're doing it for learning and it's not leaving your studio. Yeah. You don't need a permission for that. But if you're going to do anything else with it, uh, I wouldn't. Like it's just not for that. It's for yeah. practice yeah. for your yeah. own personal application. Yeah, I, 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 I just saw a question. Sorry. Go ahead. 
I was just going to say, I saw the question come up about the 10% yeah. rule. There's no 10% rule in copyright law. So, so it's, it's really, you know, whether you're changing the photograph 10% or the painting 10%, no, no, it don't. You know, I always tell my students, if you don't want to fall off the edge of the cliff, stay away from the edge. If you're going to change something only 10%, whether it's a photograph or anything that you don't have permission to use, keep it in your studio for your practice, for your edification as something that you want to do for you. But yeah, no, that no, no 10% because then you go, Oh, in my estimation, that's like 15%, 20%. Like it's so, eh, it's, it's like trying to nail jello to the wall. It, yeah. It's, it's so yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Well, going back to uh, stock uh, resources, Pixabay, if you haven't found Pixabay yet, um it's a it's a, a free service uh app that you can get uh free free photos for uh they on their website they say every image here is royalty free so but again use that as a learning experience you could you could paint from those you could you could sell those but you can't enter those paintings into OPA or other or other uh, organizations. Uh, yeah, well, different organizations have different rules around that. Right. Um, but you know, consider this: that if you are entering a jury competition, um, and Stephen is a photographer, uh, I mean, you know only too well that that photographer has created the composition. Mm -hmm. They've created the lighting. They've had the idea. It's their vision, and so it lacks integrity and creativity and originality to be competing against other artists when you're springboarding off of somebody else's creative work. It mm -hmm. just it lacks integrity. So stay mm -hmm. away from that edge. Uh, in jury competitions, you do not want to be found out. As standards chair with the Federation, I've had members rat out members and I've had to do the follow-up and you do not want to go there. Oh yeah. That's, That's, not, mm. That's messy. Not no, yeah. Oh, that would be a hard conversation to have. Um, Yvonne, you were going, <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it's a really <laughs> Yeah, hence this event. Um, we've, we've tackled it a few times at Masters and it's a very awkward conversation to have. So um, yeah, I'm happy for this, uh, this discussion. Uh, Yvonne, I think you had something to say earlier. Yeah, I had a couple of thoughts, but while okay. we're um, on the topic of using photographs, um, I'm sure some of you have seen in the media, there's a big law case um, and it's come back up again to do with um, Andy Warhol's paintings of Prince and super popular made Andy Warhol millions of dollars and, and the photographer is still alive and she was paid 400 and some for about $450 for her image for Andy Warhol to do a painting from that image, photographic image that she created for him to do a one time for the magazine. And then he continued to use it. Oh, yeah. So it's a big court case. And it's, I believe it's way up now in the courts trying to decide. Mm. Okay. And that, you know, the media is saying this is going to influence how the art world is allowed to conduct themselves, the outcome of that court case. It's just kind of interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, even the curls in, print, in um, Prince's hair in Annie Warhol's paintings are exactly as in her photograph. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, interesting. And yeah. then the other thing was, Gay, I wanted to agree with you about um, practicing the scales. I'm always talking about that to my, um, to artists who come to my studio to learn that it's, um, it's like the analogy of learning a musical instrument and you don't wanna pick up a drum kit and or a clarinet or a saxophone and start going without practicing the scales first. And then, um, because people, for some reason, our whole culture, right from children up, we're expected that if you're going to be good at drawing and painting, it's just natural that you don't have to learn. And it's so not true. So learning and um, with some of your favorite painters and copying and, and being taught is like learning a musical instrument or a second language. 
and then um, you can learn and practice the scales and then you can start composing, mm -hmm. right? I just find that an exciting thought that so many people come and say, I could never learn um, to be, to improve my art, but absolutely you can. Mm -hmm, absolutely, especially at Mastery is with one of our delightful mentors who all have space in their group. Uh, shameless plug, sorry about that. Um, but nowadays with, with Instagram, especially Instagram, right? It's so easy to post and sell. Uh, so th this is, I think, part of the problem that um, when, when we're starting out, we can start selling. Like you can, you can start selling immediately. You don't need a website. Uh, you can do it right on Instagram. So it becomes so tempting uh, sometimes before we're ready to sell, uh, to start um, making some money. Yeah, it's tricky. Uh, there's a story that uh, one of our guests shared. I copied a painting by Armin Hansen and wanted to submit it to a local well-respected gallery's annual exhibit. I asked if I titled it with after Armin Hansen and the curator said, yes, that's the proper way to submit. And it was accepted into the show. Do you feel that that is inappropriate? No, it's not inappropriate. As long as you've put after so-and-so, so the people viewing that painting understand it's a copy of so-and-so's painting. So the okay. curator, you know, was correct in that. Um, having said that, it's not the kind of piece that um, most competitions, uh, jury competitions would accept. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, a commercial gallery might, and it's okay, you're not breaking a copyright law, but you know, you've gotta, you've gotta take each case sort of on its own, you know, what are you submitting it to? What's mm -hmm. it for? But it's not breaking a copyright law and you've done it the correct way, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, there is an educational exemption only to US copyright, but I thought it only applied when there is a formal educational institution in place. Are you familiar with that? Um, like educational yeah, exemption. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know about the educational exemption. I've, I've, I've heard about that. Like, if you're doing something for education, that's what we're talking about: scales and arpeggios for education, not for resale, not for entering into jury competitions. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, you can, you can do it. It's just like you All can. Per use act, yeah. Mm -hmm. Per use, is that what you said, Stephen? Fair, fair use. Oh, fair use. Fair use, yeah. Yeah, so, but again, you know, that wouldn't be appropriate for, you know, um, any kind of jury competition. Right. Yeah, so, so that's why I said, you know, uh, separate your art from commercial and nonprofit, non, not for profit. You know, this is these the non for profits learning your doing the scales, you're, you're um, growing as an artist. And then the commercial art is that's following those rules of. Uh, Although, yeah. if I may add to that, Stephen, some of the highest level jury competitions, like say Oil Painters of America, professional artists submit to Oil Painters of America all the time, their own original compositions from their own references, if they've used references. And, you know, they do, it's a lot of representational painting in the OPA. And those paintings are offered for sale, for profit, right? So, so there's actually sort of three categories instead of just the two. There's the one where you can copy anyone's photo, anyone's painting and just do it in the privacy of your own studio and enjoy it, put it up on your own wall. Uh, although it'd be cool to not take credit for it when people go, oh, that's a lovely painting. Um, <laughs> I actually have a painting in my studio that I've copied and um, I did it as a learning experience. I, it's from, it's, it was a Matt Smith demo. And I thought, oh, I wanna see how he gets those edges. And so I painted along, it stays in my studio and people walk in my studio and they go, oh, I really like that painting. And yeah. immediately I come clean. I'm thinking, I need to tuck that away maybe. At this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, so, so there's, there's that. Then there's for commercial use where you have paid to use an image and you're creating a painting from it. Um, and again, you don't want to just become a copyist. You know, there's a, that's a whole nother conversation about good use of photo reference material, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's the jury competitions at a higher level. Well, even, even at a lower level, even for um, art clubs and stuff, 
not cool to be using calendar images, not cool to be using, you know, just don't do it. Mm. Find something else to work off of. You know, there's so many online references now that you can, you know, buy the right to use. So that photographer is at least getting compensated and they deserve to. It's mm. their piece of original art. That photograph is a piece of original art. So. All right. So for clarification, Natalie's wondering, as long as you give credit to the original maker of the photograph or painting you copied or recreated, you are not breaking copyright copyright laws. Does it need permission as well? Or just the credit given? Oh, well, you can give a credit and not have paid to mm -hmm. use that. But there so being a paid, I think, a photograph. I'm sorry, there's a delay and I couldn't hear what you said, Yvonne. I think the question is referring to paint, a painting that you've painted, not a, from a photograph. Uh, this one refers to photograph or painting that you've copied or recreated. As long as you give credit to the original maker of the photograph or painting, are you not breaking copyright laws? So with the photograph, you need more than credit, you need permission. With the painting, uh, I mean, there's not a photograph involved and there's not the same sort of thing going on, but you definitely need to give credit. And again, not for juried competitions. This might be for some show you're doing in some other venue, but not for jury competitions. For the painting put after. <clears throat> yes, yes, I mean, so, you know, yeah. So you, you don't buy the right to use that. You can just, you know, like you say, it's it's fair use, but you must give the artist credit. With the photograph, you better have paid for the licensing or the right or get the permission for that photographer. If they don't want money for it, that's okay. But you've got to have that permission, yeah. not just the credit. And I think in, in the U.S. law, there's 70 years after the artist died. Mm, that's right. It, Where it thing goes in the public domain in Canada, it's 50 years. 50, okay. Yeah. Mm. Even so, in a jury competition, you want to watch, you know, if you're copying somebody else's creative thing, yeah. that's not going to fly in a jury competition. Yeah. And just to throw, to be a little bit of a devil's advocate and throw in a, a spicy, because our, our um, images that we sent out on social media said, um, or it adds spice, and this is going to be a spicy conversation. <laughs> so back with the, actually, David and I, David Langevin and I were talking about this and um, earlier and talking about how back in the days of the old masters, it was a sign of your success that people wanted to copy your paintings. And, you know, the, the biggies like Rubens, their paintings were too expensive for the average Joe to buy. So there is lots of mentors and aspiring artists were, um, and emerging artists were painting Ruben knockoffs and selling them cheaper. And Ruben loved it. It meant he had arrived. So mm -hmm. that's just a little spicy bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Uh, things have changed a bit. Um, so true. I know that David has, David is very, um, he's, he's happy to be copied. Um, and yeah, he, he doesn't have a lot of concerns about that. Uh, but that this is part of the, the issue why I, I think I keep hearing again and again is get permission, talk to the artist if you're not sure, or talk to the photographer, just ask. Don't, uh, don't assume or, or don't, yeah, like you said, Kay, don't walk close to the edge of the cliff if you don't want to fall off of it. Yeah. yeah. Because and again, it's so good for your career to start creating your own style, your own signature. Mm -hmm. And that involves your own composition and lighting and all of that, right? Yeah. It's good for your career and also good for your skills. Mm -hmm. After you practice the scales a whole bunch. <laughs> and it's it's also taking care of your yourself as a brand and mm -hmm. growing that brand with, with integrity. And, um, and you don't want to soil that brand by questioning or having other organizations question that and I don't want to say blackball but there's there's degrees of 
resistance that can happen um, to someone who um, who uh, has less integrity, I would say. Mm. Mm -hmm. You want to build your career the right way. Yeah. You know, and and make your mark. And as Yvonne said, practice is so important. Um, and so is developing your own voice. And I know, Julie, you're going to have a thing about developing your own style, which I think is going to be fascinating to listen to. I want, yeah, next I want week. To that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so, you know, stay away from the edge of the cliff and all will be well. Um, but practice. Don't hesitate to practice. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, as you said earlier, Gay, those practice pieces that you're copying your favorite artists, give them as a gift to your best buddy or to your, you know, your kids. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and still, you know, sign them after so and so. And still sign them after. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely sign them after. I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, up your own compositions and your own ideas and your own vision as early in the game as you can and you know because you can still do the other stuff and and you know after having painted for decades i'll still uh you know see a painting that i love and i'm like hmm i wonder how they did that and i <laughs> my paints i go oh yeah what happens if i use that little scrapey tool what happens if i you know and and it's wonderful for learning and i will never stop doing that myself and i make no apologies for it but you won't see those pieces hanging anywhere Mm -hmm. And even, yeah, and you're right, even if it's in your studio, and the signature is to say, so if I copy one of Stephen's paintings to learn how he gets those effects, I need to write after Stephen Patrick, mm. right? Yeah. If it's just going to stay in your studio, I don't think it really matters, but the conversation still comes up when somebody says, oh, I love that, right? That I think it's painting you did, and I'm like, well, it's a copy from a a demo that I saw because I wanted to learn how those edges were accomplished. And I, I feel like I can't say, oh, gee, thanks. You mm. know, because it doesn't seem right. It lacks integrity. Right. Yeah. If you get that feeling in your gut, then it's time to stop and question if you should move forward. Um, and a plug for the uh, event, the panel next week uh, that I get to speak at too is how to find your style. And Yvonne, you were talking about this before too, about um, the learning part you know soak it in copy learn techniques all of that and then the the joy and challenges to apply it to your own work and to the style that is innately in you i believe um, and that's a whole another process um, which is really beautiful and lovely and that's for next week's discussion though there is a, a question i want to uh, read here i'm curious to hear more perspectives on doing paintings and workshops learning from an artist's style, still an original composition, but then selling them because I've seen that done a few times. Is that kosher? So learning from an artist's style, still an original composition, but then selling them. So I think they're asking more about copying a style than copying a composition. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, so technically speaking, there is no copyright on style. It's not, it's not something you can copyright. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I've seen lots of people that have studied with, with someone in like in Canada here, Mike Swab, you know, wonderful acrylic painter, really distinctive style. I've seen lots of people do lots of sort of Mike Swabian paintings, like Mike, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure that he doesn't have a problem with that. Um, but he can't copyright that style. So you can be using that style and on your own painting. Now, the other part of that question though, is uh, having done it in a workshop mm. where perhaps the instructor has put hands on your painting and shown you some strokes or some brushwork or something. Um, uh, about selling it, I'm not too sure. About putting in a jury competition, the Federation of Canadian Artists would not tolerate that. Um, and, but we can't police everybody. So I'm sure it still happens, but that's what we make somebody tick a little box that says, this is, you know, was not painted in a workshop because, you know, if your instructor has gone in and painted a bunch, again, you're taking credit for work that's not yours. Having said that, sometimes, not always, but oftentimes the instructor taking your brush with your permission and saying, you know, 
what you, I have this happen all the time where where I'm explaining something to a student I'm like yeah, so so you could lose that edge like this or this or this or this and and they start looking at me like a deer in the headlights and I go okay and I'm trying to verbalize a visual <laughs> language and then I ask permission to say may I take your brush and show you and most of the time people will say yes because they know that that's a learning opportunity for them and they can take that painting home and see what I did and they can learn from that so it's a learning thing. Um, so as for selling that painting, like I, I wouldn't have a personal problem with it as an instructor. There's no particular copyright issue with that, but there is a juried competition issue with that within some organizations. I hope that that's a full enough answer. Yeah. And, and yeah. I think as a, as a student, if, if one of my teachers painted on a painting, I would not want to sell that painting because I would keep that in my collection as a learning tool yeah. um, forever. And so, was, yeah. So that's, that's that issue. Yeah, I agree. And it's true, Gay, so often you cannot quite put it into words. So you will ask, the, like I will ask an artist who's in my studio working with me to, for, for permission to demo on their piece. And I'll say, okay, I'm, can I demo for you on your piece? Yes, please. And I'll say, uh, when I finish, we're gonna paint that away, right? We're gonna take that off and you are gonna do it. So they hand me their brush and I demo for them. And then they're like, no, you cannot take that away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hanging on to that and then I had in my studio classes it was kind of fun um some of the students got so that they would <laughs> and it took me a little while to catch on to it they would just kind of hold their brush out and say I really don't know how to do this Yvonne <laughs> right <laughs> and just kind of look hoping that I'll grab that brush <laughs> and then they would call it um if I demoed on their piece they'd say you can't wipe that away that's an Yvonne that, oh. part of, oh. that part of my painting is an Ivansky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all well, this, you know, and, and I find sometimes, sometimes I'll get a more developed painter in, in, a, in a workshop and they absolutely do not want you to touch their painting. Oh is, yeah, you never did, right? Well, but, but then I get other beginners that would like me to, to come around and fix their painting every time. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll, I'd like you to try it first. <laughs> And then I'll come by and put a few strokes on, but um, I've seen that some instructors will actually sort of repaint a whole thing. But anyway, uh, we digress a little bit, but yeah, you, you've got to kind of watch that a little bit when it comes to, and I totally agree with Stephen is that, you know, if there's um, a certain amount of the instructor's work on your painting, you've learned something from that. It's a good thing to sort of keep hanging around so you remember the lesson. Mm. Um, I, another thing, uh, because Masteries is online, we're not physically uh, with each other where an instructor or mentor can take the paintbrush. Yeah. Um, the question has come up. What if a mentor has he heavily influenced the piece as far as critiquing, you know, once or twice or, or, or whatever, so that the artwork continues to improve? Where does that sit? That's the goal. Okay. <laughs> right? Wouldn't you say, Gay and Stephen, that's the goal that we're sharing, which is so exciting to share our knowledge and our techniques and what we've practiced for years. Yeah. Master and, you know, craft, and then the artist improves because of that. That's exciting. Yeah, and most, most artworks are not created in, in a vacuum. You know, speaking for myself, um, you know, a few of the masters, masters, even there in your community are, are personal friends. And we will show our paintings to each other and ask for suggestions. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't consider that to be a problem. So, and most organizations, you and you guys might have a different experience, but most organizations that I know of, including the Federation, uh, we, um, if someone's had a piece in a critique, uh, it's different than having had it in a workshop, um, you know, because the instructor hasn't touched the piece. They've made suggestions that might be adopted or discarded. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think it's, I don't think that's as big a deal. That's my opinion on it. I don't think there's any hard and fast rules around it. That's my personal opinion on it. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem if a student takes a piece that I've critiqued and they've improved it. Uh, 
in part by the critique, uh, but in the end, they've executed it and they've made the decision to take my good advice. <laughs> or not, right? Yeah. Not. Well, then, and the next question is very similar, which I think is we're going to have the same answer. What about if you paint in an open studio group where you bring your own compositions and pro projects, but a professional artist gives you feedback as long as they're not touching your painting and they're paid for the advice? We're good. Yes. Well, <laughs> hey, yeah. if, if you were with the FCA, they would say if you've had that piece in a workshop in that environment, they don't want you entering it into jury shows. Now, mm -hmm. because in most workshops, more than just a critique goes on, it's hands on painting. And so it might be a little bit different. I'm not, I'm not sure. That's kind of a gray area in my okay. mind. Another great area. Okay. Um, we have eight minutes left. One thing I wanted to talk about is what do you do when you get copied? What is the what what is the process that we should walk through if we find someone has copied our work? I've had this happen. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, you know, here's the thing. Unless uh, you have very deep pockets, pursuing it is really going to be more of a frustration than anything else. Um, the worst thing that I had happen to me was um, I had this outfit out of China, th and this happened to uh, a number of my painting friends around the same time, and they took images off of my website, which were at 72 DPI, I don't know how they did it, and they were selling giclés of my work, Wow! Um, and it got brought to my attention by a third party. And they've done that to Bob Ginn and to Ellen Wiley and to a few other painting friends of mine. And I emailed them and I said, what are you doing? And they said, oh, sorry, we tried to contact you, but when we, we couldn't get you, we went ahead. So copyright <laughs> laws in some, of, in some of those countries don't exist the way we know them. That's right. And, uh, you know, I wasn't willing to hire a lawyer and, and pay the money, but they sold, I don't know how much money they made by selling G clays of my work, but they didn't have high resolution images. So I'm not sure how good the G clays were. And in the end, I just let it go. Um, but I, I think that if you find out someone has been copying your work, the very least you could do is drop them a line and say, hey, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, because it's, it's, it's not cool. And I don't think people should get away with it. But, you know, like I say, unless you've got deep pockets, it's really, uh, a long road. Mm -hmm. I think there's organizations in, in Asia that are actually reproducing your work by other artists. So the resolutions are, are, you know, the highest and actually signing your name, which is total fraud. And there's yeah, nothing you can do about it, you know, like unless you have deep pockets. It's fun. And another another resource artists might want to keep in mind is, um, you know, you can check in with um, CARFAC, um, the Canadian Artist Representational, ooh, I don't know the rest of that acronym. <laughs> they, they sometimes will offer help or have guidelines around what to do if you're in that kind of um, situation. So, mm -hmm. um but definitely, I mean, if it's someone you know, just say, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I, I, one, thing, it's a, one thing I want to mention is the first time I was copied I, uh, with someone on Instagram from another country had repainted basically my painting and put it for sale. And my paintings are very unique. It's, it's very, and they're not from any reference photo. They're from my imagination. So it was very clear uh, copying. Yeah. And, but the emotional reaction I had was brutal. I felt uh, almost violated when I first saw that. And it took quite a while to recover. And I thought, oh man, I need to, I need to keep myself in check and, and how, how tight am I going to hold on to my, my copyright, right? Like what, what can I do? So I did something and, and let Instagram know when they deleted those posts of my work, but that was all. Uh, and then I blocked the person, but it's happened again since. And, and so for me, what I need to do, and this is every person's, you know, individual reaction that you need to think about is, I have to hold on loosely because that sort of thing will make me mental if I'm worried about being copied all the time. 
Um, so yeah, that, that's yeah one thing that I think we need to tackle too. Yeah. Also, yeah. You could also I'm not sure what's like, yeah, and my mentor helped me with that whole process to, to not be upset. I, years ago, my mentor sent me an email and, and then with a link to a website from Mike or from Steve, one of the um, places you were talking about in Asia where artists are copying my paintings stroke for stroke. And, and then he, my mentor called me and said, look at all of your paintings that they're copying and exact copies, just like you said, Stephen, they're titled what my paintings were titled, signing my name. And, but my mentor said, you've arrived, <laughs> like, right? <laughs> look at this. And I thought that was just such a, just really planted a positive seed in my mind. And they're not, those paintings aren't really competing with me. They're off across the ocean. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There, there's um, a, a website called Tin Eye that you can reverse search. So take a picture of your painting, upload it to Tin Eye, and it'll search the entire website, World Wide Web, to wow. find it, uh, that image a anywhere else. So uh, it's it's quite a neat neat feature. I didn't know that is interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. That could be a bottomless pit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so back to what do we do if? Um, yeah, what would be good professional practice uh, if we find this happening? What would you do? Step one, two, three. If you find people copying your paintings? Yeah, yeah. If it was someone, you know, in North America, you see copying, how would you deal with that? I would contact them. Yeah. And I don't think there's a one, two, three. I would contact them. I would, number one, I guess number two would be to hire a lawyer. Number three would be to sue their ass. Um, <laughs> sorry. But, but, you know, unless you got deep pockets, that's a long road. Or you could contact mm. RFAC and see if they can help you in some way. Mm. Um, but, you know, a perspective shift might be in order too. Like Yvonne offered one. And, uh, you know, maybe imitation is the, sincerest form of flattery. I don't think that person's going to get very far. I don't think they'll get much traction with it. Um, Maybe but, they're getting your name out there. And that's only as a, as a shift of how, rather than, like you say, we're not going to see them. That would be not be much fun for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if, some, if it's somebody in your circle or somebody in your art community, I mean, they, first of all, they should know better. And if they don't, somebody should, should certainly tell them that that's not cool. Um, and I, I would do it myself if I was able to reach them or if I knew about it. Um, that's what I would do. I, I did on Instagram for the next person who copied me. I, I let them know that, you know, you're not supposed to do that. And this is my copyright. And they apologized. And I said, okay, could you repost it and, and tag me in it and credit me for it? And then it'll be fine. And they didn't. And um, they said they would, and then they didn't. So I just block them and and try not to think about it again because you know it wasn't and, it was and what some people don't understand and i think this is true with american copyright law as well Stephen. you can correct me if it's not is that the copyright exists with the creation of the piece right. you don't need to copyright something for it to be copyright right. it's right. just the As copyright exists with, with the creation yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and i don't know whether everyone knows that as soon as you put your painting onto a support to a panel of canvas, it is automatically copyrighted. You do not need to apply. Yeah. Awesome. My dog just started barking and it's the hour. <laughs> the dogs say it is out, we're out of time. That was a, a good discussion. We probably could have gone for another hour and I know I didn't get to all the questions. Sorry about that folks. Um, all right, thank you, Gay, Yvonne, and Stephen. Really appreciate your expertise, perspective, your experiences, the whole shebang. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you, and happy painting, everyone. Happy creating. Yeah, lots of thanks coming up in the chat. Uh, yeah, that's a tricky topic. Uh, we'll tackle it again and again at Masters. So yeah, thank you through very much for your generous sharing. Pleasure, thank you for having us. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody.